On this episode, find your flow. How to identify your most productive hours of the day. Hi, and welcome to this new strategist. This is the show where we share with you how to be more focused, rested, and productive by sharing strategies to manage your energy levels through better sleep. I'm Alex Young, a tech founder and a corporate problem solver with over 20 years of experience building digital products and mentoring emerging leaders. I'm Marcin Vitana, a scientist and an innovator with over 10 years of experience working in hospitals, leading research into sleep and advising emerging sleep ventures. And I'm the guy who's jealous of Alex's light setup. <laughs> Matter of time. Matter of time. Uh, so... Today, find your flow. So um, we really want to learn a bit more about how do, how do you identify your productive hours of the day? And I think it was our first episode, we were talking about um, that situation in the workplace when probably early morning and after lunch, you have these dips in, in energy and usually you're on a Zoom call or something and everyone's like, oh, can't quite focus. And back then we we're talking about coffee and, and how coffee may help. Um, not everyone is so aware and maybe, you know, your tummy, the stomach tells you when, when, when you're hungry or, um, you, you know, you really struggle to listen and contribute to the conversation on these sort of online meetings. Um, but we'd love, really love to know if you can, you know, impart some wisdom on how do you, is, is there a process when it comes to identifying when your most productive hours are, Ashen? Yeah, absolutely. Um Coffee is great. So when you you know how to how to navigate your uh, dips in the energy of the troughs, but w important thing to understand is that our cognitive cognitive abilities they don't they don't stay the same over the day. So mm. we are smarter, we are faster, at certain times, and we are a bit slow, and we are a bit not that smart at certain times as well. So if you understand this, it would be great to navigate the the work or the or the, the startup we are working yeah. on yep. the research we do um there's a great um article uh, a book actually i saw uh, published by an oxford um, researcher called russell foster in his book um i think it's called rhythms of life he says change between the daily point uh daily high point and the daily low point can be equivalent to the effect on performance mm -hmm. of drinking the legal limit of alcohol so even wow. though we don't really realize it because that's the normal pattern we go through. We have been doing that for 30, 40, 50 years. Um, the physiologically, there's a massive change in the performance when you actually dip into it. There are a couple of ways we can do that. Um, we, we need to understand the, the 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 general pattern. It works. It works for about maybe 80 percent of the population will get into be that in in mm. a tick. Um, easiest way to do that is um, I'll bring in a slide now so we can see there's a from 8 to 11 a.m. our cognitive reasoning or the logical reasoning ability goes up and it peaks around 11 to 12 p.m. So this is for general population. And after that, the, the cognitive reasoning, logical reasoning ability goes down from 11 to maybe about 2 p.m. and 2 p.m. is the trough that's where it, it's the lowest during the daytime mm. and from 2 p.m it keeps going up to about um i think it's about 5 p.m where the second peak we call it the recovery or the rebound and then after that once again it starts slowly going down so the important oh. yeah it's it's an important pattern you can apply um or consider in your work normal uh, just work. It just reminds me just what you just mentioned between 11 and 2, that dip, and the episode that we did with regards to napping, which yeah, was after right. lunch, so assuming the, the 1 to 2 sort of time frame. Yeah, absolutely. Then um, where the normal body clock, how the normal body clock works, and um, after eating you, usually your energy level drops as well. So when you apply that, knowledge we got from that episode into this you know all right my logical reasoning is a bit low in that time perhaps i shouldn't do certain tasks in that time um so this is 
a great general pattern to consider. And the other one, I think we are going to talk today, it's more personalized diary. So what we got here in the screen, we divide the day into one and a half hour blocks. So 7 a.m., 8.30, 10, uh, so forth. And it just keeps going down. Um, and then what we would like all the listeners to do, write down what you're doing at that particular time mm. and rate the mental alertness from one to 10. Rate the physical energy from one to 10. If you do that for five to seven days, you have a really nice amount of data that you can go through. If you plot it, you will identify, all right, at 8.30 a.m., I feel seven out of 10, but 10 a.m., uh, 10 a.m., I feel nine out of 10. And then you can okay. use that to figure out what you should do. Um, the next thing I think quite important to um, for us to identify uh, to, to, to learn what happens in these different peaks and the troughs. So in the peak, um, where our sharp-minded analytical capacity really peaks. So from that 8 to 11, it's really mm -hmm. good to problem solve or do more analytic works where you have to focus on a particular smaller area. You don't want any distraction. So your mental guardrails will really protect your focus. And then you can do that narrower, narrow focused work, whether you are the whether you are the CFO who's auditing your financial statement, um, or you are the entrepreneur that have to do a report on the performance mm. of the company. So yep. it's like a narrower field of work. That's the ideal time. You're very vigilant. Yep. Okay. And yeah. And that's it. Um, I'd love to do that exercise myself. So maybe there's something, some homework that I can do. We can bring my results back in a, another episode, but doing that study self-study, um, is quite good. I'd like to, to do that. And, um, it's good that you mentioned it's across five days. Is it? Um, I think if you do for five to seven days, you should be able yep. to capture enough data to understand that pattern. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be really interesting. And, and. I guess we've got a we've all got a sense of you know we sort of identify ourselves as day day or night people in terms of when we're focused on work and some people love to get up at, at 5 a.m and do the the run or cycle before work and and others like us may want to do things in the evening and feel a little bit more energized by it um That's right. how does how does that factor into it is that just a individual thing we just feel that or, or is there some science to that as well no, absolutely. There's a lot of signs suggesting um, we have maybe three main types of chronotypes. We call it in um, in sleep medicine. Uh, so three types of people in when it comes to the time you are more active or more alert. I feel like you and I are probably in that night mm. owl uh, group, um, and then they have we have early morning rises, so we call it um, larks. And then mm. third bird is that intermediary group in between the night owls and the morning morning groups mm -hmm. um that's the other important part i think you have to consider with this general pattern of uh, peaks and troughs it for morning people and for the intermediate group the, the third birds what we just discussed it's absolutely fine it's a general pattern that they follow but for the night owls the evening people uh, you have to almost kind of switch this 180. You have you start mm. with the smaller peak, then you go through the trough, and your peak starts in the second half of the uh, day. Yep. We do have a we do have a tool that um, we can. There are actually two main tools. We'll share the links in in the description. Um, but this is something that we can used very easily. So this is called Simplified Munich Chronotype Finder. You need to know what time do you usually go to sleep on free days. So the, we are not talking about the work days, the free yep. days, it's the weekend of when you're on leave, and yep. what time you usually wake up on free days without the alarm. So that's the important part. You don't have any obligation to wake up at a particular time. What is the middle of those two times? So if I go to sleep at um, 12 midnight, and I wake up without the alarm clock at eight, mid time of um, 
those two times is 4 a.m. And if you look at, we got a nice little graph here. If you look at the graph, you will see midpoint 4 a.m. falls under the third bird. So usually, if this midpoint is 12 a.m. to 3.30 a.m., it's a lark. So you are a, you are a morning person. Uh, 3.30 a.m. to 6 a.m., you are a you're a third bird or an intermediary person. Um, and if that midpoint is 6 a.m. to 12 p.m., you're a night owl. Um, we'll share these links and in our socials and our uh, description. But this is a nice, very quick way to identify whether you are a lark, third bird, or an owl. Okay. Or so, so, for instance, for me, if I'm currently sleeping at 12 a.m. Yeah. and waking up at 7 a.m., I would fall yeah. in that th third birds, the left-hand side of the third birds. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's right. So the percentage here um, associated with each each uh, title, it's, mm. it's the amount of general po population approximately in each of those categories. So you can see about almost 80% are morning morning people and or the intermediary people. Okay. And so what, what does that mean for me as a third bird? What, what, what's that? Yeah, I think in chronobiology, you can figure, there are a lot of research saying these groups have different personalities, but to understand what we are trying to do today to rec when it comes to identify the, the flow states or the time where you're really active, uh, I think now we can go to our recommendations. So if you are a third bird or if you are a morning person or a lark, your, you can do your analytic work where you have to be very sharp and focused on narrow areas in your peak. Uh, that's that first peak happens between 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. approximately. Um, and if you are, a, once again, luck um, or, or a third bird like you, I think you should do your administrative work during the trough, so approximately mm. 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. So that's where you should probably do your uh, go through your email inbox. If you have to do some paperwork, you don't really have to make critical decisions. You need, mm. should really put it in this time. Another that's thing when be, should, that's when I'll be napping as well. That, absolutely, that's right. <laughs> you, so th that's the other thing I was going to actually mention. In this trough, it's important for you to have regular short breaks so you don't focus on an, uh, a topic for an extended period of time. And the last peak we have, the smaller peak we have in the second half of the day, um, we call it the recovery or the rebound, approximately 4 to 6 p.m. That's the time good uh, good to do insight work. So insight works when you have to brainstorm something. You, you don't need the mental guardrails up. You can, uh, you can brainstorm something or you can come up with a new campaign for your startup. That's the time you let your mi uh, mind wander a bit. You're not too okay. kind of on a topic but it's it's almost like the time you go in the shower where you let the guardrails down mm. you let you you think you let the mind wander so this is where i think the innovation happens it's a good time four to six very good yeah so that's the it's a, it's it's in the evening i guess physically you, you've probably got less energy as well but your your mind can come back to life and um do some broad thinking over a wine or a beer or something yeah, absolutely. That's right. And depending on the time you wake up, you can um, slowly move these time frames to the left or right, kind of adjust mm. accordingly. But in generally, in general, this is approximate time frames good for certain tasks. Okay, now that's really helpful. Uh, I, I'll, I'd like to try and uh, apply it myself. I've never actually mapped out, like you know, I'm sure everyone has a sense of their own energy levels during the day, but never really thought to plan out my calendar. It's like, you know, what it's like at work. You, you go Outlook open and you sort of work out who's available when, and you may book in a few buffers so you can go between meetings or travel time, et cetera. But this will be interesting to map out your Outlook calendar based on these peaks and troughs. And that's a really interesting overlay. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's a good chance for you to have a chat up to your manager or and to your team as well and say, all right, I'm really sharp around this time. So I think if you are doing some important meetings, ideally I would like to have in this this time frame. So I think it's a, um, it's important to bring this knowledge to the workplace as well. 
get not just you but the whole team on board and um which will help you to perform at your highest capacity that's great we should definitely put that into practice Absolutely. Um, I've learned something new there and, and I think I definitely um, haven't applied that sort of thinking before with how I structure my day. It's sort of like I fall into that third peak the afternoon, the 4 to 6 p.m. and sort of things get done magically at the end of the day almost as a catch up to yeah. um, the slog through other parts of the day um, without really realizing what was happening. But that's uh, really great. Thanks, thanks for sharing that. So we'll put a little bit more information on the show notes. And, and for those of you on that, that are listening to this and can't see it, uh, we'll, we'll make those available um, through descriptions. Uh, yes, we are now on in podcast format as well. So we're just published on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music. Um, for those of you that would prefer to listen while in the car um, rather than watching, um, for everyone else that's watching now, uh, please like and subscribe and definitely join the, the Facebook group. We'd love to hear from others and uh, respond to any questions. That's the end from us. See you later.